Welcome back, everybody, for another Imperium Workshop Showcase. Today, join me as we take a look at the Soryu. Today's design is the SSC-02 Soryu, so, or the Soryu SO. This comes to us from not just one creator, but three. They are Marimo-chan, Thana, and Gao. And I really hope I'm saying those right. I wanted to make sure I was pronouncing this right, so I looked it up and found out what I can only assume to be the namesake this ship is named after. The Soryu was a Japanese aircraft carrier built in the mid-1930s for the Imperial Japanese Navy. And it seems to me that is how they are naming the ship because this ship is a massive aircraft carrier. The Soryu is, of course, an Unlock Level 25, but also a Size Class 25 capital vessel. This ship is truly massive, and for some comparison, I'll show you how big it is next to the Cerberus that we looked at a few weeks ago. I'm going to go ahead and throw a disclaimer out that this ship is way too massive to realistically look at building it in a single player game. If you want to use it in a single player game, you're probably going to have to rely on the cheat commands to do so or spend a lot of time harvesting a lot of resources. Honestly, I think this ship is a little bit overkill even for a server unless you have a sizable faction count that can help pull in all the resources needed for it. So starting at the back of the ship, we have three cargo doors. We're going to go ahead and take a good little peek up here. Also, we have upper landing decks. As I said, this is clearly an aircraft carrier so you're going to have plenty of room for your small vessels. Now, while this ship is, of course, an aircraft carrier meant mostly for small vessels, it also has access for your hover vessels. This is the interior section of the vessel area of the ship. The main bulk of the ship space is consumed by this massive room. As we come in from the middle, cargo bay door we find we are in the hover vessel parking area you have two sides that you can park hover vessels on as well as a ramp of course for loading them out and we have a nice repair bay area in the middle and it looks like it's set up for you to have various size vessels marked where they need to park now one thing that caught my attention is this motion detector here next to the repair bay i'm assuming that is meant to turn it on and off when you have a vessel sitting on top of the repair bay itself in order to make it a little bit nicer as far as the electrical signals go or just to help improve your power usage a little bit. We have the area for the repair bay lined with cargo boxes as well as stairs to act sort of as a blockade from moving too far back and hitting one of these elevators on the sides. We also have additional parking areas here for your small vessels, left one, left two, right one, right two. Each runway has a set of doors with one in the front of the ship, one on the side, one at the back, and one in the very top of the bay above your heads, leading up to the other runway on top. At the front of this room, we have a nice little crew lounge where we have a fridge and O2 station on each side, so they have a place to get snacks, they have a place to refill their oxygen, and they can hang out and watch the football game or soccer game, whatever it is they want to see on the little hollow screens there. Now, throughout this ship, there are doors that lead to random spots on the outside of it. I can only assume these are meant to be access doorways for maintenance, repair type purposes, or maybe if you are fighting against small fighters coming in, so you can have crew go out and also help fight. At the front lounge section, there are two elevators, one on each side, that lead up to this nice walkway, give you nice little visibility around the area so you can look down, see all the nice ships parked here, as well as three passenger seats here for when you need to jump into space and get moving. Now, one thing I really liked about this design is in the central column area, which is also accessible from other elevators back here, we do have little parking places for what I can assume to be the utility style vessels. These bays open up to reveal access to a pair of cargo boxes for each one as well as an advanced constructor for each one. I really like this aspect of the design because if you use cargo style utility vessels such as the pack mule, you can go down to a POI, 
strip it out for everything you need and then bring it back up right to the bay to have access to your advanced constructor without having to load everything into inventory entering through the middle door in the back we come into the same area where we have all of our cargo boxes and advanced constructors here ready for access from this side this is also accessible from the elevator that comes up from the middle column as well as has doors on the front side as well that you can access from there tucked away neatly in the ceiling are our ammo boxes as well as we have a medic station and o2 station back here and taking this elevator towards that side we come up into another access area where we can of course walk through and we are in the front elevator of that room also with easier access to our ammo boxes and we have a nice top-down look on everything with the cargo boxes and advanced constructors going through here we have a sort of mini bridge where we have a couple of passenger seats and a nice place to look down so this can only be assumed to be the launch command area where they tell them who is coming in and who is going out of the bay doors now of course with any ship design this detailed you can only assume that there's plenty of access to things like your mechanical requirements and taking the central column elevator you have just that coming around here we have a medic station as well as access to some passenger seats a secondary pilot seat and we have two switches which are not labeled what they are for heading straight out from the elevator here we come into this nice little corridor that leads us back here to where our warp drive is located you can see ready access to it as well as a nice seat here for our engineer named scotty who's just going to tell us i'm giving her all she got captain this is the same elevator that leads up into the middle of the fabrication area and is the central elevator to the entire ship leading through all major areas of the ship on the next level up in this elevator we come into the crew quarters where we have our bunk beds of course all of our bathroom shower amenities as well as access here into another little area where we can look down see everything here this is also accessible by some of the elevators on this side but gives you a nice top-down view of the main lounge area there we also have access to the outside here on the top launch deck Passing back through the crew quarters, we come through the elevator into another door that leads us into our food processing area. We have two food processors and six fridges total on the outside area here. We also have more doors leading back outside onto the upper launch flight deck. Going into our grow plot area, we find on each side we have another food processor and two more fridges, as well as a massive number of grow plots. In total, this ship comes with 216 grow plots, giving you every type of farmable resource you need as far as food and item production. We also have another set of two food processors and four fridges at the back, as well as a medic station and an O2 station. Heading out of the room, we come back out onto the upper flight deck where we have access to some cargo boxes and of course more ships over here where we have other parking spaces for our ships everything triggers automatically with motion sensors for the lots and you see we have this area here that is actually a covered area so you can use this to store additional vessels before you take them down through the doors here of course to be repaired when necessary now as i said this is not a ship you're going to use a lot in a survival type scenario as a single player and that's probably a good thing because you're right outside the engines here and as you can see there's a bit of a temperature problem if you were going to be walking through this area coming up to the top of this central elevator we now enter into the main bridge area where we have numerous seats we also have access doors leading outside where we can view and look around both on the upper flight deck areas as well as just nice little viewpoints and access if you want to go spacewalking now taking these stairs at the back of the bridge area we come up to a little spot where we have an automatic set of ramps that lower down and lead us to another place where we have parking spots for small vessels however looking at the size of the parking spots i can only assume because of its location this is meant to be the emergency escape vessels for the captain and crew in the bridge the main bridge section has several passenger seats as well as a food processor o2 station armor lockers cargo boxes more there's no fridge anywhere in sight, so I'm assuming the food processor here is meant more for aesthetic purposes. Heading forward, we come into the main 
footbridge command area where we have our three passenger seats we have our pilot seat and we have a pair of switches one for the shield system and one for the anti-air system now when the shield system is deactivated you have this nice blue light and you can see all around the entire cockpit area giving you plenty of nice pretty views of the planet you're on activating the shield system triggers all of these panels to pop out and we get our light switch to red as well as a nice little sign here saying the shield system is activated activating the anti-air system reveals several turrets up top hidden behind more shutter doors and activates all the turrets themselves as well all around the ship providing you anti-air support once again the sort of you is an unlock level 25 and size class 25 capital vessel with 160 fuel tanks, it can hold over a massive 840,000 fuel, which when you activate eco mode, gives you fortunately 320 hours of use roughly. The ship also comes with 160 oxygen tanks, giving you 320,000 oxygen capacity. There are nine ventilators, six O2 stations, and three medic stations throughout the ship. Of course, with any ship this massive, it is going to be fully decked out with weapons. The ship has six minigun turrets, four pulse laser turrets, two artillery turrets, six cannon turrets, six flat turrets, one plasma turret, and two rocket turrets. There is also a total of 37 cargo boxes and the four ammo boxes we saw, along with the 16 fridges, seven food processors, and eight advanced constructors. Now I shouldn't have to say this again, but this is a vessel completely out of the realm of building in single player mode without using cheats or spending a massive amount of time gathering resources. With the heftiest resource requirement being the 126,000 plus Sathium ingots, that is still a little bit easier to achieve than the 21,564 Arrestrum and Zascosium you will need to also build the ship. Treating this as strictly a concept design, trying to be as nice and as detailed as possible. I am really, really impressed with this ship. The detail work on it is extremely good. Obviously, it took a lot of work to build it since it took three creators to work on it. And I definitely encourage you to try this ship out, at least in a creative mode game, to see how you like it. And if you do like it and you are comfortable using cheats to build the ship, go ahead and throw it into your single player game. With the massive amount of storage for small vessels, the only real need for this in a single player game is just because you want to say you have it or because you like collecting various designs, small vessels, and maybe a couple of hover vessels as well. Beyond that, the amount of fuel you will need to keep this ship going is massive. So be forewarned, if you do want to use this in a single player game, you'll be constantly burning through your fuel reserves. Once again, this is the SSC dash zero two sort of you so or the sort of you so it comes to us from three creators they are marimo chan thana and gal i will have a link in the description below if you want to check this design out and if you like the design from the video or from playing on your own game with it be sure to leave a thumbs up for the creators well that is it for today's video be sure to hit that like button if you enjoyed this video and be sure to hit subscribe and tick that notification bell if you have not done so already. Leave me a comment below. Let me know what you think about the design. Do you like it? Do you not like it? Are there things you would change with it? Or do you really wish you had enough resources in your game to build it so you could fly around with a few dozen small vessels in your arsenal? Thanks for watching everybody. I'm your host Mr. Spicy. As always, be sure to keep it spicy this week and I will see you in the next video.